why don't you give everyone the quick, you know, the, the quasi quick John yeah. Barrows, you know, origin. I got my degree in marketing because I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. <clears throat> got out and really just didn't like uh, the the being, you know, a marketing intern type of thing and moving through that track. And I didn't like the pay either. So I ended up getting into sales with DeWalt. First, it was I had to drive around and literally all I had to do was drive to construction sites and say, hey, if you're yep. using Makita drill, have you ever tried the DeWalt? And if they didn't, hey, try it out. I'll come back in a week. And if you wanted some next time, hey, go buy them from Home Depot. Like I didn't even have a quota. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was really more event marketing than it was sales. But it got me on that track. And then I got promoted to, to, to run a Home Depot division where I had to take like a $10,000 order of, of DeWalt tools and turn it into a $50,000 order. So it was a little bit more sales. But then I left that uh, after about a year and a half and I went to Xerox and that's really where I got my true sales education. Um, you know, I was talking about, you know, selling, selling copiers is about as brutal as it gets. I sold copiers of the government. Um, so it was like, Jesus. Um, but I learned how to sell. They had a great sales training. Yeah. I split off from them and started a company after about a year and a half, started a company called Thrive Networks with a few friends of mine from high school. We did outsourced IT services to the SMB market. So companies under 200 employees, we managed their whole infrastructure. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was 25. So I took every training there was Sandler, Miller, Ryman, Taz, Spin, you name it. And I came across Basho and it was the first training that I really, really loved because it was super tactical, right? It wasn't this huge theory. It wasn't this huge process. Yeah. It was like, hey, here's how to send an email and I'll send the email. And so I used Basho to help grow Thrive Up. We ended up being the fastest growing company in Massachusetts for a few years in a row. Uh, got us to about 85 employees and about 12 million in revenue. And then we sold off to Staples. So Staples came and bought us. And I uh, spent about a year going through that integration and uh, come to find out apparently I'm not a corporate guy. Uh, I feel you, man. Yeah, right. And so after a little while, Staples uh, offered me another position, which is a really nice way of firing me. And um, I was looking for a job and Basho came knocking and said, hey, John, you want to be a trainer? I was like, nope, absolutely not. And they're like, why not? I'm like, I, I don't like trainers. Uh, because most sales trainers that I come across up until that point in my career were either failed sales professionals or professional presenters. Right? And mm -hmm. if you've ever been through a training where you can tell the trainer's never actually done what you're, they're telling you what to do, right? Or if they did it, it was 20, 30 years ago. I didn't want to be that guy. But Basha was like, don't, you know, you have to use these techniques to sell so you can train so you can get paid. So I was like, all right, the whole practice what you preach thing, right? So I joined Basho, took on some bigger accounts, brought on some bigger ones. And then uh, long story short, they screwed it all up and I took it over. So um, went off on my, like a new CEO came in, 2007 hit, right? Uh, and a uh, new CEO came in, went all in on software. And then one day just uh, decided to, there was 35 of us, rolled into the office one day. I was like, all right, that's it, party's over. And we're like, ah, shit, all right, what's the transition here? Like a month or two or whatever? He's like, I don't think you heard me. Here's a check, here's a box, pack your shit, and get out. Like, right now? And uh, get out. So, so I ran to the bank and cashed that check. And I've always said, look, I'm not the smartest cat out there by any stretch, but I'm definitely an opportunist. And so... Everybody else was like, holy shit, I'm fired. I got to go find a job. I'm like, holy shit, that guy just left a $3 million company on the side of the road to die and doesn't want it. So I rolled yeah. into his office and was like, what are you going to do with the training? Because I knew all he wanted was the software. He was a software guy, not a professional services guy. And uh, he's like, I don't know. What do you think I should do with it? I was like, shit, can I have it? Uh, yeah, take it. So I took over uh, with Kent State Partners, with one of the other senior trainers. And about five years ago, went off on my own with Jay Barrows. Uh, main reason, my business partner is a good guy. Uh, but his number one client was SAP. Mine was Salesforce. So kind of tells you the personalities of the two. Uh, so now I split off. And I mostly work with SaaS now. But like Salesforce, LinkedIn, Google, Dropbox, Box, uh, Aptus, Okta, you know, a lot of the SaaS companies. Not that this is SaaS training. It's just I like playing in the SaaS world, right? Because it, it pushes the envelope from a tech standpoint. But it also pushes the envelope from a sales standpoint, which is what we're going to talk about today, which is... Look, if I'm training Salesforce on the same stuff I was training them on two or three years ago, they're not renewing my contract, right? So it's something that it forces me to stay up to date on what's happening. 